Sniper Ghost Warrior 3, a game that's being judged very unfairly in just about every review I've watched, even though I do agree with some of the things that are being said. Yes, Ghost Warrior 3 has a mediocre story. It's not coded very well. It has a lot of frame rate problems and more than a few bugs, along with a two-minute load time every time you fire up the game. And this is on my computer that can play Crisis 3 maxed out with much shorter load times. On the consoles, it's more like five minutes. Gameplay-wise, yeah, it's a Far Cry clone. Yes, it seems like City Interactive was just throwing everything at the wall and watching what stuck when they made this game. Almost like they had no idea what they wanted this game to be, and yes, the open world feels very lifeless and barren. There's almost nothing else to do outside the main levels. But there's something I noticed no one pointed out. The difficulty modes. You see, there's a very big difference between each of the three difficulties, and it even tells you what they're about when you go to select them for the first time. And when watching all of these reviews, something led me to believe everyone who played this fucking game played it on the easiest difficulty and didn't bother with anything else. They didn't even bother exploring the fucking options menu. I noticed they had all the training wheels turned on, the mini-map, the XP counter, all the hints and tutorials, the controls right there on the screen, the ability to magically tag all the bad guys and then know where they are at all times on both the mini-map and the main display. Everything you can think of. And these same people went on to nitpick every little thing they could find, making the game out to be this unmanageable chore. And some of these people then had the audacity to claim that the game is too easy. Well, yeah, of course it's going to be easy as fuck when you have all this shit helping you out. As far as I'm concerned, these are legalized cheats, and they ruin open-world games all the time because there's almost never a way to turn them off. Thankfully, that's not the case here. You can turn almost all this crap off. Which is why I'm offering a challenge to everyone who said this game is too easy. Play it on challenge mode. Go to the options menu and turn everything but the health and ammo counter off. Everything. Even the bullet camera, because most of them don't know you can turn it off. Do that, and then come back to me and tell me the game is too easy. Rest assured, kids, challenge mode is tough. And it should have been the only difficulty put in there. This is the way the game was meant to be played, because when you play it on this mode, you need to play it like a sniper. You need to scout the area, carefully plan your attack, and take out all the bad guys in order of how much of a threat they are every single time you want to start shooting. It's going to involve a lot of sneaking, a lot of moving around to line yourself up for a better shot, and a lot of downtime. Especially when you've taken out most of the bad guys and are trying to find whoever's left. But you can't get careless, because one mistake can kill you. If you make too much noise, or the bad guys figure out what direction the gunfire is coming from, they'll start looking for you. And they'll most likely find you. Or you can turn a corner and walk right into the line of sight of a bad guy you missed or didn't see when surveying the area. The checkpoint system can be forgiving sometimes, I mean it won't throw you back to your hideout after you die, but more often than not, all the bad guys you took out will come back to life, and all the bullets you used up before you died, they're gone. Gotta go back to your hideout and restock if you want to get them back. And if you're playing a story mission, fast traveling is disabled, so you gotta take the long way back. As for running and gunning, it's not an option here. Even with heavy armor, a single burst of gunfire can still kill you. You can still tag enemies, but only the drone can do it. And as soon as you call the drone back, the tags go away. But when you redeploy the drone, all the bad guys you tagged will still show up. So every time you want a reminder as to where a certain bad guy is, you need to redeploy the drone. But if one of the bad guys goes around a wall, or goes behind some cover or something like that, the tag might either fade or disappear completely, so you'll have to find them again. Also, half the upgrades on the skill tree are disabled, which doesn't bother me at all because I hardly used them. There were some I wanted to use, but the way the skill tree works is you have to unlock two of the perks before you can go to the next section of the tree, and I would have had to unlock perks that, again, would have felt like cheating. Like being able to see the line of sight from every surveillance camera in scout mode? Really? Scout mode should have been taken out entirely, and I'm surprised it wasn't disabled on challenge mode. Oh, and the minimap? It's gone. Disabled by default, and there's no way to turn it back on. And those are just the big things, never mind all the small things I don't have time to talk about. Does it still sound too easy? And let's talk about some of the things that I agreed with, such as the story. Yeah, it's not great, but it did keep me interested until the end. 
Every time I beat a level or saw a new piece of the story, I always wanted to know what happened next, as opposed to the other two games where I can't even remember the main character's name. So it's doing something right. As far as the open world feeling like it was put in there as an afterthought, that's because it was. The open world in this game is nothing more than a vehicle used to let the player tackle the levels however they want. My guess is that City Interactive couldn't figure out how to give the player the level of freedom they wanted to and still make the game linear. So they're like, ah, fuck it, throw it into an open world. Oh, we need extra things? Uh, just tack a few of these on and call it a day. And that's exactly what all the extra stuff in this game is. Tacked on. Even money, one of the biggest factors in nearly every open world game, isn't an issue here. Unless you're the kind of guy that absolutely needs to buy and upgrade everything, you'll have more than you know what to do with. Ghost Warrior 3 is an open world game that puts the main story before everything else. You can completely ignore all the side quests and not even bother to explore the world itself, and you can still beat the game, because you unlock a whole bunch of stuff from beating the main missions, and that's what I did. Nearly everything I used I got from beating the main story. I did go through some of the side missions, but I ended up using maybe two things that I unlocked from them. And it wasn't a life-or-death situation depending on whether or not I had those things, it just made everything a little more convenient. And I'm just fine with that. I see so many open-world games that jam time-consuming side quests and MMO-style extras down your throat. In many cases, you need to grind the extras if you don't want to have a hair-pulling difficult time taking on the main story. And in a couple other cases, I found you need to grind some of the extras to merely progress in the main story. To see an open world game not only go against this, but also make the game challenging by itself, it's not only incredibly refreshing, it's a sign of a damn good game. By the way, I don't hate San Andreas, it's just the first example that popped into my mind. Now as far as all the bugs and glitches and bad coding go, even this turned out to be not as bad as I was expecting. Most of the bugs and glitches are funny, and there were only a couple times where a mission I was on glitched out, and I couldn't continue for some reason. But all I had to do for the most part was reload a checkpoint, and I only had to restart a mission once. Yeah, it was annoying, but I've had other games crap out on me far more than this game ever did. Now this game isn't perfect. There's definitely a few things here that bother me. The first thing I can't stand is every time you enter into a certain area, this big message pops up in the middle of the screen saying, you are now entering the outpost, or the village, or whatever the name of the location was that you just entered. And you can walk back a few feet, walk forward again, and the message will pop up again. It's incredibly distracting and unnecessary, especially if I'm trying to set myself up to take out a bad guy. Now remember when I said the game was pretty tough? Well, the game could still be tougher, and before the Gotcha Brigade comes at me, Challenge Mode will be hard for people who like to play games designed like the Easy Mode on this game. Which, by the way, it also has regenerating health. But for those who generally like to play games that pack as much of a punch as Challenge Mode does, I think most of you in that camp will agree with me on these three things. The first one is every time you take out the last bad guy in an enemy stronghold, a giant message pops up on screen saying, Hey, congrats, you cleared the outpost! And I'm just like, wow. What a way to ruin all the immersion, because now I know I can run around like a moron and make as much noise as I want, and nothing's gonna happen. Because the outposts never call for backup for some reason, even if you get spotted. The worst thing that will happen is a guy might go to the mortar launcher and start firing mortars at you, but no backup will ever arrive, no matter how bad things get. It's the perfect way to completely break all the tension, and there's no way to turn this off. This is something that belongs in easy mode, not challenge mode. The next one is the main objective of whatever mission you're playing will almost always be marked on screen. I got mixed feelings about this because if it's a person, the marker constantly follows them around, and you always know where they are. Again, this is something that belongs in easy mode, and again, we have no way to turn it off. Now, if it's a random object in a corner of some kind, like in this level that takes place in a train station where you have to find a manuscript of some kind, I might make an exception for this. But even in cases like this, you could easily rewrite the dialogue so that the guy in the radio can say something like, Oh, you're looking for the manuscript? Why don't you check inside the station itself? And then you can make the script glow or something like that. Which, oddly enough, it already does. 
Stuff like this ruins the fun of exploring. Don't explicitly tell me where something is, give me a general idea, and then let me go off and look for myself. As I said in my Call of Duty video, when you have something like this in a game, you're not playing it, you're sleepwalking through it. There's plenty of other ways to pull this off without putting a fucking marker on the screen. I also really wish there was an option to turn off the Far Cry style detection ring. That would have made the game really tough, but I'll bet you I would have loved every second of it. And lastly, this isn't really a nitpick, but I do wish there was a way you could go back and replay some of the levels. I wish every open world game was like this, but I really wish you could do that here, because some of these levels were really damn good. And not only that, but once I beat the game, I was left wanting more. I tried going back to the places that some of the levels took place at, but there were hardly any bad guys there, and it wasn't the same. Making matters worse is that there's one whole save slot, and it's only autosave. You can't manually save, so unless you want to end up replaying the entire game all over again, you're kind of stuck. And that's all she wrote. There is multiplayer, which I didn't bother with, and a couple extra mini-campaigns if you get all the DLC. They're not too bad, but if you get this game, the one piece of DLC I recommend you get, if nothing else, is the all-terrain vehicle. It's only a dollar, and the car you get is definitely worth it because you get this right at the start of the game, and it's much better than the stock car you get if you don't have this. Makes me wonder why this wasn't put in the game to begin with. Anyways, is Ghost Warrior 3 worth getting? I'd say so. Especially if you can get it at a discounted price. I really don't understand all the complaints people have with this game. I had a great time playing this. I liked it better than the first, and I'd say it's not only the best entry in the series, but it's better than most of the other so-called Far Cry clones out there. Alright kids, thanks for watching. If you're already subbed to the channel, or are about to, be sure to hit the bell so you get notified when I post a video, hit the like button, and give me some feedback. I don't care if it's good or bad.